Hello, and uh, welcome to a video. Um, my name's Alex, or Poetaster if I'm an internet person to you. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be showing off a circuit bent SK-1 that I did as a commission piece for Nest Lake. Um, if I was smart, I would have filmed this before I put it in the mail so I could point at it. But uh, anyway, a tremendous thank you to, to Nest Lake for reaching out to me. Um, I'd never done a commission before, um, but this was a really cool project and I think it turned out really well. Um, and yeah, I've been a fan of his since before this. Highly recommend checking out his stuff if you're not familiar. It's, it's fantastic, so super excited to uh, make an instrument for him. Um, but yeah, uh, just a note on this video, since it is pretty darn long, the first most of it is going to be uh, me going over how everything works and, and all the different modifications and bends I did in fairly excruciating detail. So if you're not into that nerd stuff, totally get it. Um, you just want to hear some cool noises. Um, you can just skip to the end of the video. That's where all that is, where I just demo um, some of the different bins and patches. Um, it'd be cool if, if future Alex can put like a cool timestamp here with movie magic. Just skip to there. And um, yeah, you can just see what it sounds like. Um, but anyway, yeah, without further ado, um, let's take a look at how it all works. First cool thing to show off is these hinges that I designed. And these essentially allow you to have an adjustable top portion so that you can set it something that's comfortable. I saw a bunch of these that had like a 90 degree angle that's probably really stable and nice, but it, this, this seems like it would suck. So I wanted something that would be adjustable uh, so you could set it where you want to based on the setup. For this video, I'm just gonna lay it all the way back but yeah, you can tighten these down and just kind of set it at whatever angle is comfortable slash works for your setup. And you can see I've also added uh, new jacks on the side, uh, both for output and for input. Uh, that way when it's laid down like this, you can still access, um, you know, a full quarter inch output uh, as well as an input that will go into the effects section, which I'll talk about in a minute, as well as um, you can sample off of this input as well. So, just kind of going across the different functions, uh, the first thing is a pretty standard patch bay over here. Um, you'll notice there's a couple different colors going on. So what's up with that? Uh, all these red ones are data points across the ROM and RAM chips. Um, so those you can combine to kind of scramble the data, make some interesting sounds, but by and large if you're mixing data pins with data pins, things are going to be fairly stable. You can make some wacky sounds without too, too much worry of crashing things out, though it is, it is definitely possible. So the next thing um, are these blue jacks, and those just kind of indicate uh, points that have different functions or might be a little less stable. Um, so working across here, this first one, that is a ground connection. That way if you want to, um, you can connect a data point or one of the other points and pull it down to ground, essentially kind of canceling that signal out instead of mixing it with something else. These next three, these are address pins. So similar to data pins, but these I've noticed are a little bit more unstable. You can get some really cool wacky noises out of them, but these are more likely to kind of crash things, um, anecdotally anyway. Someone who's smarter about how chips actually work would probably know why that is. Um, these are also really nice for a video synth, which I'm going to demonstrate separately. Um, here later on, but you can actually take the output of these address pins, run it through a diode, um, which I'll show is kind of built into the board already, and uh, output it as a video signal. And then finally, this last one here, this is a point um, in the audio path of the board. And so what this lets you do is it lets you 
pull data or address lines and actually let you dump that into the actual audio signal itself so you can hear the actual uh, data happening and get some really cool digital sounds going that way. Then over here we've got a couple of patchable controls. Uh, starting here with this switch, um, again you've got a blue to mark the center pin or input of the switch. You could tie something in here and then you could wire up one or two different connections and then just hot swap between this. This is a three position switch so you can leave it in the middle for neither and then wire it up. That's mostly uh, for performances. You could find two bins you really like, wire them up in advance, and then just quickly swap between the two. And finally, we've got uh, similar to the switch, but just a potentiometer that you can wire up. The only real difference between, you know, just a normal potentiometer, there's actually a diode connecting this input to the center of that potentiometer. That is necessary for doing a video synth. That way the uh, signal kind of only moves one way. So you can take one of these address pins, run it to one of the outputs, um, and again I'll demonstrate that later on. But what it also means is even if you aren't really using the potentiometer, you can create a one-way connection between any of these points. Normally when it connects it's you know, both directions. This will allow you to kind of force a, a one-way street. It will also let you wire up multiple points and kind of adjust and balance between them. This gets particularly cool when you start using uh, the audio signal point uh, and the ground point. So you can kind of not completely ground something out but kind of push it towards ground. Um, so we'll demonstrate that here a little bit. Also, you, you can kind of hear it. These are wired up so that the outside is the actual connection point. That way you can kind of make a soft connection. You can hear it's not really fully connecting up the way it's going to when I start using contacts, but you can get a little bit of a effect using body contacts without necessarily needing to wire anything up. Yeah, let's wire up a couple of patches just to, to show a little bit how this works. Um, so I'm going to connect here the audio port to one side of the pot. This pin seemed to be pretty fun. Wire that up on the other side. And then okay, I'm going to ground it out on the other side. Give it some more volume here. So as you can see, as I push it more towards that ground pin, it kind of drops out more of that effect. All right, so let's wire something up using our switch. So for the center connection, I'm going to wire two different pins into the audio connection. Oh, get these clippies again. There we go. So let's take, again, let's try an address pin on the top one. And then for the bottom connection, see. Just grab one of these and see what it does. If you can't tell, I didn't plan these out in advance. So you can see with the switch in the middle, it's still pretty normal. Let's try to connect this top one, so it's the address pin, to that audio. You can see we got that interesting low frequency sound we were getting before. But that's not very melodic or anything. But 
Yeah, it looks like it got stuck, so that's... just hot swap between a couple of different patches. So that is kind of how the patch bay works, um, as well as these two controls. Um, again, I'll show off that uh, video synth specifically here in a little bit. All right, so moving across the top here, um, you can see we've got a fairly standard clock mod. And just to demonstrate how that works, you can see we've got our normal piano sound. If I had switch this from the internal clock to the modified clock, you can hear that pitch. So if we use the sustained sound, So like this gets really fun uh, when you start messing with the actual rhythms. So you can do some fun stuff by like cranking the tempo up and then dragging the clock way down. So that's the clock mod. It's a it's really cool, but it's a, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's kind of just what it does. I just noticed that that's been on the whole time. No wonder it's been acting a little bit funky. Uh, down here in this next section, we have a kind of a switch bay. These are some preset um, bins that you can toggle on and off uh, using switches. This top row, these are three position switches. Um, in the center, they're off. And then on the bottom row, these are just two position. Uh, down being off, up being on, kind of like you'd expect. So, as with anything circuit bent, it's fairly unpredictable. These are a little more predictable, so uh, I'll kind of run through what they do as a general rule. Uh, though, again, a little bit unpredictable sometimes. So the first one is a... The first one is a drum boost or cut. So if I cue up the demo here, you can hear toggled up. We've got a nice drum boost. Back in the middle, normal balance. And then down it's cut. It's still in the mix. I doubt the crappy sound is picking it up, uh, but it's, it's almost entirely gone. It is still in there though. Moving on, I'm really not sure what to call this thing, so I've just been calling it a lock and glitch because it's really fun. Uh, when you throw it down, it seems to kind of lock whatever sound you're doing. And it pretty reliably comes back. Sometimes you gotta restart your sequence, but um, it, it hasn't completely crashed it yet, so it's uh, pretty stable as bins go. The up, I've noticed, is really unpredictable. I'm never quite sure what it's gonna do. out the harmony effect. Um, looks like it's not being very exciting right now. Oh, there we go. Here's a good one. So as you can see, that one kind of makes some interesting glitches. Next up, similar to the drum boost, this one's kind of a bass boost. down, it's, it's kind of a nice boost and up, pushes it into an interesting overdrive. This myth switch uh, does a similar thing with the main kind of lead sound. You can push it into an overdrive, or kind 
of a softer boost. This one is uh, very similar, but it's way more noticeable. That one uh, really pushes the lead up, so you can combine these two. sound and the bass sound. It's similar to what these two do, but um, kind of the relationship between the two. So you can see here, it's really prioritizing that bass chord. prioritize it kind of changes the function of that one. Finally this last bend I really like. This one's actually just two data pins. Um, they just work really nicely together. It creates this almost hurry up effect where it kind of desyncs everything uh, from the the rhythm. And this gets you can get really weird if you then use the clock mod. Switch Bay, just a, a quick overview of what those bins do. Um, again, as a rule, it's a little bit unpredictable. Um, over here we've got the effects section. Um, so these are all custom built effects um, for for this, this project specifically. Um, so the first section you'll notice here, um, this is essentially a really rudimentary mixer. Um, this lets you adjust the volume for the synth input, and you'll notice that dies off really quickly. That's more so just to give a, if things start getting really noisy and out of hand, you, you can panic and kill just about any level of sound that might come out of this thing. Uh, same thing for the input jack. Um, that way you can have a wide sweep of control, um, even if you're putting in, you know, a really hot signal, you, you've got a, a good chunky potentiometer to be able to cut that down if you need to. You've also got these switches and those let you kind of select the input point. So how the uh, signal effects chain kind of goes, it goes from the robot effect into this echo filter effect and then finally into uh, the filter section uh, which is here. These bypass switches are for the echo and filter now this lets you essentially skip over the robot effect. Uh, you can still get to this echo. Uh, this label is, is a little bit confusing, but just to, to be clear, basically it's do you want the robot effect or do you want to skip it and bring it to the other two. Um, so first up, the robot effect um, is probably the most interesting one. This is basically a clone of the Death by Audio robot pedal. Um, I'm not very creative, so I've just been calling it the robot effect. Um, and so how it works is you've got this control knob here, um, as well as a mix knob. This, I'm trying to remember if the Death by Audio has that. It may not. But since this is a pretty intensive effect, um, I, I thought this would be nice. All right, so just to demo that effect really quickly. This is what it sounds like completely dry. I bring in the wet in here. So that is essentially the, the robot mode. Um, this big retin here will jump you straight into this mode. You also have a mode shift button here. This effect, in addition to this kind of arpeggiated robot sound, can also do pitch shifting. So it's got three degrees of pitch shifting down, a uh, center kind of normal, chunky, distorted square wave kind of sound that's really cool, without any pitch shifting, and then three levels of pitch shifting up. And this button will cycle between those. So you can hear that's a really low rumble. As 
you can hear, this this thing is noisy. Um, so we're going to talk about the filter in a minute, but the, the filter is really critical to, to help manage a lot of this noise. But just to show you what the start is. you kind of bend the the pitch and uh, kind of tempo clock on this effect specifically. You've also got a vibrato which you can toggle in any of the modes. And you can see control also changes the speed of that vibrato effect. So next up we've got the filter. Uh, basically this is a resonant bandpass filter. Um, these three green knobs here and then it also has a toggleable second stage uh, bandpass filter um, that's currently cut off. Uh, use that switch to control it. So if I toggle the bypass that's got the filter on and you'll notice alter the volume in a pretty big way. And you could hear there we had some feedback coming in from the, the robot effect. But just by sculpting that a little bit. You can slice those frequencies out. And down here, there's essentially two stages of this bandpass filter. One that's in a deeper bass range, and one that's in uh, more of a, a low-mid um, sort of frequency range. And this suite lets you kind of adjust the balance between those two. Um, so I'm going to use the demo tracks, because the percussion kind of really shows that out. There, the high ends are really bright. And there you can hear the volume drop. Because again, this is a stuck, crappy guitar amp, not the best bass response. Um, but moving that into the lower frequencies. And if we use our drum boost. the bandpass filter. Actually, I'm going to use the same thing to demo that. Now this thing can get really noisy really quick. Um, volume warning, watch your ears. So this first one kind of adjusts the low point of that bandpass. Open that up so you can hear it a little better. The second knob adjusts the high end. And this is where things get dangerous because this can self oscillate. So I'm going to turn this down. So you can see you can bring it right up into those hyper bright frequencies, but it can kind of scream at you if you take it too far. Just to note, even when this is turned off, um, because of how that filter works and the fact that it's mostly passive, um, this thing can still, it's much quieter, but you can hear it's still oscillating in the audio signal. It's always good to crank this one down. And then finally, I'm going to leave the filter on to keep some of the noise out. Um, the last stage is our echo effect here. So I'm going to toggle that on. Just the time. And you can hear it's got a nice tape warpy bendy effect. The second stage of this 
I'm honestly not sure what to call it. I've been calling it a filter because it chops sounds out. And so just to better demonstrate this filter effect, um, the hotter the signal coming in, the more the more uh, you can actually hear it. Uh, so just to demonstrate that, I'm going to use the robot effect, mix dry, to push a really uh, kind of bigger, loud signal, uh, so you can hopefully kind of hear again with this bad audio what this knob is doing. demonstrates all the controls. Um, next up I'm going to hook up um, a couple different inputs and show the effect section and how it works with some external signals. Alright so for the first demo of this line in I've just got a uh, microphone here connected to the input jack here on the side. Uh, it's just a, another quarter inch jack. I've got an XLR at a quarter inch that I'm using to connect this. And I'm going to turn the amp way up so it hopefully drowns out just my voice in the room. Again, sorry the audio kind of sucks my interfaces down right now. Um, so we're working with what we've got. So check one, check two, check one, two. As you can see, it comes through pretty well and clean when you've got everything uh, kind of dialed in that way. Uh, so first thing you demo is this robot effect. So once I kind of cut this on, check one, check, check one, check, check one, one, two, one, two, one, two, and as you can see, um, that was a good example, so I'm going to leave that in even though it looked like a goof. This filter and this robot effect sometimes will kill each other, for lack of a better term. Um, so toggling this filter um, will kind of resurrect the robot effect if it, uh, the filter kind of pulls it too far to ground and, and kind of kills it. So you can see the robot effect. Check one. And this is where that pitch shifter effect gets really kind of interesting. Check one two, one, two, one, two, one, two, check one, two, one, two. So as you can hear, you can kind of bend your own voice. One, two, 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 So that's, that's a pretty fun vocal effect. Um, and just, you know, So yeah, that's just a demo of uh, a line in with the mic. And uh, next up, we'll check it out and see if we can use it as a guitar pedal. Um, even though I can't really play guitar, we're gonna, we're gonna check it out. I've got my guitar hooked up here. Um, I've just got like an arch top. We're using the, the pickup for this. And again, I'm gonna crank the amp so that you can hopefully hear it. Um, 
over the guitar since, since it is yeah, somewhat loud acoustically. All right, so I'm gonna do times because that, that took me a while to uh, dump that in, um, but basically. <laughs> Yeah, long story short, um, you can dial in the guitar and get some decent results out of that robot effect. It is um, a little bit tricky uh, just due to the, the input volume, but once, once you kind of manage it and get it set up just right, that doesn't sound half bad. Uh, so let's dial in the echo as well. Alright, so as you can hear, it's, uh, it's a little bit noisy. Um, I was having some fun playing around with it, but uh, yeah, a little bit noisy, but you can have some fun running uh, basically any, any signal in through this effects section. Uh, Again, take some some fiddling around, particularly with that filter. But you can you can dial in just about um, just about any signal I've tried so far. So that's really cool. Um, so the last thing we're gonna sample the guitar coming off of the line in. Um, I think it samples at A. So I'm just gonna pluck. Let's go and make it a loop. See y'all can hear a little better. the input. You can run it through the effects section, um, you can mangle the sounds in all sorts of ways. You can go ahead and sample it straight in. Uh, one thing to note, the sample is before the effects. Um, I could not noodle the way to make it happen the other way around. Uh, so basically it's always going to sample off of the, the clean input signal, not the effects section. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to show is the video synth that I talked about um, earlier. Just to mention, I know the lighting's kind of a nightmare. Sorry about that. that was the best I could do not to glare out the screen too bad. Um, but just to walk through it, what I've got set up here, um, just the synth. Still got it hooked up to the amp so you can, you can hear what I'm playing. Um, also got just a, a CRT TV back here. What we're going to be doing is taking some of the uh, data signals and routing them out into the video of the TV. So having an analog uh, television is, is pretty crucial to making that actually work. Um, you might be able to get something through on one of the digital converters, but, but probably best practice to use a uh, CRT TV. So let's take a look at how to wire it up. Um, so this it in the light well it's just a little converter box I made um, basically it's a just a standard simple uh, dirty glitch mixer you've got two video inputs and then a knob that kind of smashes them together the switches just change which input is going into which side of the knob um, or lets you turn them off entirely so what I've done is I've added a second input here on the uh, the left side and reason being I mentioned earlier these jacks are all wired up so that the contact point is actually the outside uh, typically with an RCA jack it's actually inside behind this plastic piece um, so this second jack is just wired up so that it takes whatever you put on the outside of this jack and sends it to the inside of the jack right next to it um, 
So that basically just kind of converts it from this setup into to a normal RCA. So let's wire it up. The first thing we'll do is connect one of these address pins up to the input on that control pot. And like I mentioned earlier, this is kind of a one-way street, so that's going to keep anything from feeding back and just send the signal out to video. Then we're going to take our ground point from the keyboard. And again, on a typical RCA jack, the outside is the ground. So we're going to connect the ground to this normal RCA jack. Then we're going to take Put B, we'll kind of dial it in slow. And I'm going to wire the output from the control pot into our converter pot. So again, ground to the outside, and then output to the, the inside, which is the outside of the second jack. Then finally, I'm just going to connect the TV output to this red output jack so that we can see what's coming through. See, even with it dialed back, I'm getting a little something when I play. And as I dial it in more, data and sending it out, different sounds are going to create different patterns. We've also got three of these different address pins. So that one, let's see, we'll get some initial flash patterns, but nothing on the sustain. And that one's nice, we're actually getting a nice burst press on, but it's actually kind of staying distorted. Interesting. And now, just to try checking out, let's wire up the other side of the pot to, let's try this one that was good. It's kind of nice bursts. signal. So that's just a cool simple way to wire up um, a video set using the, the patch bay. Alright, just to show another thing you can do um, with the video synth, like I mentioned before, um, this box is also a glitch mixer. So now what I've got going on, I've got the other end hooked up to a VCR, uh, just got some Robotech going for some visuals, and the nice thing here is this gives you a stable video signal in one side, um, and then kind of that analog data signal coming into the other. So this might let you kind of balance it out and maybe use some digital capture. Um, probably won't look quite the same as it does analog, but uh, uh, potentially you can get away with something there. So just to show you how this works, um, right now I've just got two different address pins on different sides of the pot so that I can kind of move between the different uh, video effects. Um, and again, um, the only difference here I don't have the ground wire connected. Um, reason being, um, I tried that out and uh, I guess because the ground was connected, the video signal was just overpowering it and feedbacking. Um, so note to self, don't use a ground connection. Uh, 
if you've got video coming in already. Anyway, so right now this is kind of pulled hard over to the VCR. You can see there's barely a little bit of an effect there. But as I turn the glitch mixer toward the synth side, we can see more. synth and I think that is about everything and so that is how how it all works and all the different mods I did so uh, for this last portion of the video I'm just gonna show some clips of different patches I put together but yeah I'm just gonna let that in the video so um, I'll just say thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it <laughs>